Okay. All right, let's get started. So good morning. Um, today is April 2nd. This is our second Algebra 1 session this week. Um, I did want to go over a few rules. Um, one of them is to be respectful to others. So I know right now we still have very small class go on. Um, we want to make sure that we're respectful of others and that um, that we also only use the annotation and chat features when we're asked to. And then if you have any questions, um, make sure to raise your hand on screen so you can do this. And then, um, Ms. Ross, if I can have you monitor that. So let's say if one of our students has any questions and if yes. is there a hand like this, if you okay. kind of um, set it where you're looking at their faces, so that way, if they do, you can let me know because again, I can't see anyone but myself on the screen um, oh, okay. the presentation, but that way I can hear you and you're the only one I can hear because everyone else should be muted. So that way I can at least hear you letting me know that someone has a question and then I can pause the video. Okay, so how do I set it to their face? What do I do, just point to them or? Um, or well, can you see everyone? So can you see all three of us right now? Yes. Yes. Okay, then that's it. As long as you can see that and you can see, um, as long as they raise their hand and you can see them, then that's enough. Okay. Thank you. And then the next thing is do your best. I know that in this setting, it's kind of difficult um, to, it's just a weird different setting. So I would, um, so just try your hardest to do your best. Okay. A few tips. Um, try to always have a notebook or paper with you and a pencil for notes because again when we're doing math it's good for you to practice um, and actually write. The next thing if possible find some some quiet space. I know if you live in a small place like I do it can be a bit uh, difficult to find some quiet space but just do the best you can. Um, please ask questions so again just raise your hand so we know but if you have questions and you're not sure what I'm teaching go ahead and ask the same way you would in class. And then try to attend office hours. So again, office hours are whenever you do have questions. If you didn't get a chance to ask them in class, you can always ask them during office hours. That's um, some time to provide you with extra support. Okay, so at the beginning of every class, I will try to do this, a stress check. So stress check just means we're gonna talk about, well, are you in a good space and can you focus? Is there something that's bothering you, um, but you can still focus? Or maybe right now is not the time that you can focus. So notice green means that you're great. This middle one means that you're okay. And then red means that it's hard for you right now to focus in school and in class. Um, so I wanna do a little stress check. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. All right, good. So we got a chance to check in to see how we're feeling. Um, as I say, I'm also at a one. And that's because I'm feeling excited. I'm in a good space. I can focus. But as you said, I'm also feeling still a little bit sleepy. Um, I know it's pretty early in the morning, but hopefully as we get into this routine, it'll become easier. Let's go on to our next one. So this is what is filling your bucket today and what's draining it. So again, this is just a check-in to see how you're doing. And what this means is, this one will kind of, because we're still learning how to work this, we'll skip over this one a little bit today. But for next time in the chat, and because I do want to get to the math portion, but in the chat, I'll have you answer this question. And just to go over it, filling your bucket means what things are making you feel good today and what things are draining your bucket. So what things aren't making you feel as good. So for example, what's filling my bucket? And filling my bucket is you guys being here. So the fact that we have someone here today. Am I even, the fact that, um, yeah, that that we, that I am able to teach the class that's feel, filling the, this bucket. But what's straining me? Well, the things that aren't making me feel as good are the fact that we have to stay home, but I know it's something we have to do um, in order to hopefully make things better. But again, it still, it still drains my bucket a little bit. So we're pretending that each of us have a bucket inside of us that makes us feel good or that makes us feel not so good what helps fill that bucket, okay? That's something that we'll hopefully start um, discussing every class if we can. All right, so what are we gonna learn today? Today you will find slope from a graph and then you'll write the slope as a simplified fraction. Just for today, Thursday, April 2nd. 
All right, so do now. So hopefully you got a chance to do your do now. I mean, I believe you did. I think I saw that you submitted this one. But this is something that I had you guys do for your do now. Let me see if I can find my little pen. There we go. So let's look at this and let's review it. So question number one for your do now. Um, and remember that your do now is you're able to go back and change as many things as you need to change. So if you're not happy with the score you got, you can always go back and try to get a better score. So enter the value for x. If it says x minus 2 equals 15, remember that any time we have that equal sign, we can draw that river, draw the line. x minus 2, it's a minus 2. So what's the opposite of minus 2? It's plus 2. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And we know that this cancels out. And we are left with x equals. 5 plus 2 is 7, bring down the 1, x is equal to 17. Remember when it says enter the value, all you need to put is the number, okay? And that's it for number 1. For question number 2, select all the positive slope graphs. So remember, we have positives, negative, 0, and undefined. I'll just put UND for undefined right now. So they want us to look for all the ones that are positive. So they're positive, they have to look like this. If I look at A, it does not look like that. So I cannot do that one. If we look at B, it does not look like this. It is not B. If we look at C, that one looks like it, right? You see how it's going from left to right, it's going up, like the snow border is going up the hill. So I would mark this one. And then it says select all. So that means that there might be more than one option. Let's look at D. Does it look like that one too? Yes, it does. So we would mark option D. And that's just reviewing your do now. So that way you know um, what answers you got right, what, what you got wrong, and how we can do it better next time. So again, for your do nows, if you go back into that folder on Schoology, you can always retake those again. All right, our lesson for today is using a graph to find slope. Step one is we need to figure out, is the slope positive, negative, zero, or undefined? So just to remind you again, positive is when it's going up the hill. Negative, it's when you're going down the hill. Zero is when you're not moving on the hill. You're just on the ground, no hill. And undefined is that, that example where the snow border would kind of just fall. Next, we find the rise over run. So rise in the run. So remember that rise and run means um, the rise is how much it goes up or down. And the run is we're pretending someone's running, okay? So rise is up, rise up is positive, down is negative. So remember rise is, we think of rise as an elevator. Rise means you either go up or you go down, okay? Now if you run, right is positive, left is negative. So we're again, rise, and run. So we're thinking of rise as an elevator. Run means you just run. So either you run right, you might run to the left. That's what we're looking at. And we'll go over that in more detail in a little bit. Step three. So you write rise, run as a simplified form. A little bit more time on. Our main goal today will be to focus on steps one and two, um, but steps three will be something we will be doing maybe later on. Step one, find the slope of the line below. So let's take a look at this line. Okay. Our very first step is we focus on whether it's a positive. Oh, first step is always focus if it's a positive, a negative, zero, or undefined. So if I remember my example of my snowboarder, he has to walk up the hill. So that means that it's going to be a positive slope. So I know that the slope is positive, meaning it's the plus sign. 
the line is going up to the right, right? So the slope is positive. Now our second step is to figure out how much does it go up and down and then how much does it go to the right? So let me go ahead and erase what I just drew. Our second step will be to figure out, well, from this dot to this dot, so the, from this point to this point, how many does it go up? How many does it go to the right? So let's count how many goes up. One, and notice how I go from this corner to that corner, one, two. So it goes two. And then ha first, always the elevator first. So they go up the elevator two floors. And then how many steps do they take? They take one step, two steps, three steps. So you count the spaces up and over to find the rise and the run. Like it says, the line goes up two units and over three units. So the rise is two and the run is three. Okay, and they actually did that for you. So let me again go ahead and erase what what I had written so you can see that. You go up two and you go over three. And remember, we know that it's a positive slope, so there will be no negatives. So the slope is rise over run. Two over three is already a simplified fraction. So anytime, remember that it went up the elevator twice, two floors, and it took three steps, so you write it like this, two over three. You, if you are writing things down, don't worry about writing this down. I know that is a lot. Instead, we can write something like this down. So let's do our second example. That way, um, I know we won't have Let's see how much, let me just kind of go forward a little bit. I just want to see, okay, and we have one practice problem that we can do, okay. All right, step one is figure out if this is a negative, a, a positive, a negative, a zero or undefined slope. So does it go this way and it's positive? Does it go this way and it's negative? Does it go this way and it's a zero or this way and it's undefined? So to find the slope, the first thing is we look at this line. Which one does it look like? Well, if I look at my little, sorry, let me make sure that's written correctly. It looks like this one, that's a negative slope. So I know it's gonna be negative, okay? Now, my next step, we did our first step. We figured out it's negative. Our second step is how many does it go up or down the elevator? Well, let's see, starting from here, I wanna get to this, so I go, one, two, three. So I put my three. And then how many does it run or walk? It goes one. Notice at this time I put the rise over run right above and below each other. goes down three and it goes over one. So we know that our rise over run is negative three over one, which is equal to negative three, if you were to divide. Now, what I really want us to do is have you practice this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. So anyone who is watching this recording, please make sure to pause to give this a try by yourself on your own paper. Um, so again, this would be a good time for you to pause the video and practice this problem by yourself. Today? No, we won't have our next one until next Tuesday.
Well, since in next week. Right, um, not to next Tuesday, next Wednesday at 2 p.m. So that that's um spring break, isn't it? Next week or no? Oh, sorry. I mean like the Tuesday after spring break. Yeah, okay. And I'll put the dates on um on Schoology, so you guys are aware. Okay. But this is the work for this is our practice. We figured out whether it was positive, negative, zero, one, and defined. We figured out our rise. We figured out our run. Um, this is something you can practice at home. I know you have to probably get to your next class, so let me go ahead and go through these problems. Next steps, make sure to complete your exit ticket for today. And then there's a homework assignment that's due on these dates. Um, next week, we're on spring break. So there is no class next week. We are on spring break. Um, so make sure to complete the do now for next class as well. Okay. Go ahead and start.